you know, what's good guys, we'll be talking about the New York Knicks and the Miami Heat game yesterday. It was a great experience. I, I love being at the Knicks game. Before that game, I was at a Knicks Nuggets game, which happened a couple years ago. It was in 2020, the last Knicks game I was at prior to that. And the New York Knicks dominated, bro. I did not expect the Knicks to beat the Miami Heat so bad. They crushed them. The Knicks ended up winning by around 20 points. And they really closed out the game in the fourth quarter. You know, the the Miami Heat couldn't do anything in the fourth quarter. The Knicks just were able to close it out really good. And that was a, a nice victory for the New York Knickerbockers. But, yeah, Jimmy Butler, he played great. He's always amazing for the Miami Heat. And I did get a nice analysis on OG Ananobi. He made some very difficult shots, and his defense was well above exceptional. I really liked how he played on the defensive end because he wouldn't give the opponent the matchup. He was pretty much guarding Jimmy Butler, and he didn't give him any space. Like, even though Jimmy Butler had a great game, you kind of have to expect it because it's Jimmy Butler. But I thought he still did really good on the defensive end. And he surprised me on offense a little bit because he was just making tough shots. He made a very contested three-pointer. That was a nice shot. And I'll talk about Jalen Brunson, too. You know, Jalen Brunson, his footwork was phenomenal. Nobody could stop him. For every time he would go for a shot, he'd be able to figure out his way to the rim because he'd be using his fancy footwork. And, yeah, like he had around 29 points. So he played a really good game. Miami Heat didn't have any answer for him. And the Heat recently acquired Terry Rozier, traded away Kyle Lowry. And I think that took away some leadership from that team, if I'm being honest. Because I've always saw it as Kyle Lowry for the Miami Heat as a leader on that team, a strong talker, and a veteran on that team, applying like a, a lot of experience into the NBA because he's played for many years, former Toronto Raptor. And Terry Rozier, he didn't play that great. I think he still needs to get a little more comfortable into the Miami Heat offensive game plan because he did not look that comfortable to me. He was putting up some shots. He didn't shoot that well efficiently. He had around like six points. And defensively, he played okay. I mean, it was nothing that crazy. It was just okay. I mean, there's nothing else to say about it. For Julius Randle, I'm very upset, you know. He ended up getting injured in around the, I think it was the beginning of the fourth quarter or around third quarter. I'm not sure exactly, but he ended up dislocating his shoulder, which is terrible for the Knicks. And I, me as a Knicks fan, I'm devastated because it's, it's going to hurt the Knicks a lot because he scores a lot of points and does a lot for the team, especially rebound wise too. And, you know, like that's going to hurt the team a lot. And the only good thing, I don't mean to offend Julius Randle, but he is a little bit of a bull hog. So we'll see what the Knicks can do offensively, if anything different, by passing the ball more. That's what I'm thinking, you know, which is it, it lets the team and some players get more contribution than they would if Julius Randle was still healthy. But I really hope Julius Randle is able to get back on his feet and get healthy again because it really sucks to see. You know, I have to say, I had this most annoying Miami Heat fan right behind me. It was a woman, and her voice was so freaking annoying. Like, it sounded like a screeching Mickey Mouse. I, it was terrible, guys. Like, I would not m recommend sitting next to any Miami Heat fans. Like, I know Young Nero's a cool guy. He's a YouTuber I watch. He's a Heat fan. But like, that woman, you know, she, she sounded like Mickey Mouse when she sc screamed. And she would have these random chants like offense, offense, when it's supposed to be defensive chants. And it annoyed me a lot. You know, it was very annoying. That was the worst part of the game, I have to say. So whenever the Miami Heat would get a bucket, she would go like, oh, yeah, go Jimmy. Or whatever player was scoring. And she, like, it was, that was the most annoying part. But that's besides the point. That was just being at the game experience, you know. And... Yeah, I'm just really happy. The Knicks are now on a six-game winning streak. The Miami Heat are on a six-game losing streak, which they said, I'm pretty sure that they said the Miami Heat have, haven't have lost six games in a row until like 1971, so, somewhere around there. But it is pretty crazy. They, they just changed history pretty much. Now they're 50 years in the making of the world, and they're back on a six-game losing streak. So... Uh, 
yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, it was it was just a fun game to be at. And I, I wish I could have got a souvenir, but I was with my dad and we just got like pizza and a halftime. It was it was fine though. It was fun. Uh, Quentin Grimes, he did a good job in making the three pointers. Knicks just looked very well on the offense side, offensive side of things. They were passing the ball well, getting the pretty much the best shots possible. And OG Ananobi, when he was looking for a shot, he would create a shot, whether it was a slam dunk or a little mid range shot, even three pointers too. He was doing anything necessary for help helping the team win. And I know that's the biggest thing for OG Ananobi is to play to win. That's his biggest motto. And that's what he does. Every game, he plays to win. Josh Hart, he played decently. He did get a nice slam dunk down. It was good. And Miami Heat, you know, Bam out of bio, he didn't do too much. He had around 12 points, 9 rebounds. Not too much work, you know. Yeah, the worst part of that game was the Miami Heat fan, Julius Randle, getting injured. The good thing is that the Knicks are now on a six-game winning streak. Hopefully, they can beat the Charlotte Hornets tomorrow. I'm hoping for that. It was awesome to just be at a Knicks game. I haven't been to it at a, in a while. And that was awesome. Let me know your guys' thoughts on the New York Knickerbockers as of recently. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.